have to see CBB on camera at the beginning of the video. It's kind of what she's supposed to do. Do you want to see this guy? Look at this guy. Oh, BB. You like him? Does he smell you good? You know him, don't you? <laughs> Ooh, got right there for a second. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon, whatever time you're watching this. <laughs> Today's puzzle piece is Albert. It's a feather, but it's Albert because he is a composer. He's also known as the organ grinder. He's also known as Prince. His friend Jackie calls him Prince. Uh, what do you think of his hair? I'm pretty proud of this hair. <laughs> I glued every hair on that head. No joke. I think I got it from the hair I got from, I used to go to swap meets and try to find the, um, something that, I, oh, he's got really long. Look at, look at the sideburns and even his eyebrows are that hair, right? So he, uh, I, I went to uh, swap meets down in Los Angeles to get hair for the dolls that I was working on, like Ian's hair, Katie's hair, but I had a hard time finding, um, gray well it's actually like a couple tone gray hair right like it's it's got a few different colors in it and um i found that at a um it was a great gosh i know i did a film on this probably 10 years ago um i think i got it at a halloween store and i think it was um I want to say some kind of clown mask or something that had hair like that on it. But I was like, oh, that's the perfect color for Albert's hair. So I did that. And actually, Frank Griner conceptualized his face. He started to play with the mold and, and shape it into something before I did painting and, and gluing and making clothes and stuff. Um, Frank actually came up with the idea of having them have these kind of long, um, exaggerated faces. So, I, yeah, I just love him. As you can see, he's... He's got some decorations on him. He's been through quite a bit. Nice long coat. And all the, the clothes and stuff, I would just, whatever material I had lying around, like I didn't really even do a lot of purchase, purchasing of material or anything. But I wanted to introduce you to Albert today. He's a big part of the book. I kind of alluded to him yesterday because he, uh, he's, he is me in a lot of ways, or at least parts of Albert are me. Um, he is a virtuoso. I don't consider myself a virtuoso. I love music, um, but he is, he's a little bit more like that Beethoven kind of character. He's British. Um, he's now living in the US, but he commanded a fleet overseas in World War I, and this, place, uh, this book takes place in World War II. So he's one of the main characters of the book, and and befriends, uh, befriends Ian a little later on. So just to give you a quick review, you will see on uh, karensteeber.com forward slash Halloween, if you're not watching the video from there. Uh, I also have these videos on a playlist on YouTube, by the way, if that's easier for you to watch. But uh, the Halloween page has a bunch of puzzle pieces on, and I take one away every day so that I can show you the book cover when Halloween comes. So that's gonna be fun to show you that. Uh, this, this all really ties into the Idiot Savant CD. Every chapter, or sorry, every song on the Idiot Savant CD is a snapshot of a chapter in the book. And so, um, you know, for instance, green, that's kind of a carnival theme. That's the skeleton horses of Pulpal Island. And um, Crow, Mother Crow of Juggernaut, the chapter in the book, that is um, the song Juggernaut. But a song like Jackery, that takes place at the, um, at the asylum, the children's hospital. So like, it's just, it's all snapshots. I had the story almost a decade ago, so it's pretty surreal to see that, you know, between 2008, 2009, and 2019, that can be depressing, but... <laughs> I gotta say, the story has not changed. It's solid. <laughs> so there's there's been a, anyway there's been a lot that's that's kind of happened in in a decade, and um, it's it's pretty fun to see it come to f its fruition. So I thought today I would read a little bit about Albert for you because he is such a central character to all of this. And I'll start on page one. 
in the in the chapter the great stone lions you'll notice uh why i want to say about the lyrics is because the, the whole chapter starts with building manhattan was a gold streak of brilliance why should we see the grayness of skies that's the first line in the book but it's also the first line on the cd and so albert writes this poem and then i'll start to read what happens after the poem albert paused his writing and inhaled deeply he was far too old to be lying on cement his skeleton was piercing fabric, trying to escape the embattled overcoat that he hadn't taken off since the Great War. Like a bayonet affixed to the end of a rifle's muzzle, each bone was relentlessly stabbing in a futile attempt to infiltrate the formidable pavement below. Even though the wool mountain cloth was begging him for an honorable discharge from active duty, it must have been beautiful once. Perhaps it was even revered by thousands of British soldiers. He had to have hung it on a special hanger each night in a tightly guarded wardrobe near his shiny black boots. If you could get past the dust on it, there seemed to be rows and rows of awards covering most of the space. It appeared his shoulder, silver shoulder length hair had never been combed and it had to have been at least 20 years since he saw a barber. Walking by the local shop was surreal for him where men smoked cigars and the smell of aftershave floated out into the streets. He would pause to contemplate trying it, but it only triggered his memory of lining up with his high school mates and then hearing the buzzing of the pre-battle shears into his scalp. It was not something that he wanted to revisit. When one of the city mice would comment on his matted head, he countered with, was just sick of the upkeep in his low English accent. One must wonder if it was his destiny to command a fleet in something as enormous as the Great War. If it was, today's impending atrocities probably made him feel like his work back then was ultimately for nothing because here, in the Big Apple of 1939, those decorations and patches meant nothing to the people flipping coins into his monkey's cup. This sets the stage for you. This is a character who clearly has been through more than his current place and he's probably descended into a place of been there done that he's seen it all he's been everywhere pretty much knows everything um, I love listening to people who have truly lived uh, I used to think this was only old people but some old people spend their whole life dying and I um, I've learned lots from children and I it causes me to ask myself a lot you know Karen have you been truly living or are you just surviving like there's the difference between surviving and thriving I've talked about that before right um, you will see Albert is about to teach us a lot throughout this book but <laughs> he will meet Ian and he will be transformed completely by this young savant who doesn't speak but has a lot to teach so that is Albert, and uh, I'm pretty proud of his hair. <laughs> we have a joke around here that I'm pretty proud of Albert's hair. I can move it into any shape. I was a hairdresser, okay? <laughs> I practiced uh, doing hair for eight years, something like that. So uh, it was nice to be able to take something I had done in a previous career and apply it to something creative like this. Uh, I sewing as you can see is not my forte I just like it <laughs> but uh, I I also like to sew my own clothes if you've seen the um, if you have seen the there's a coat that I made it looked like a kind of a patchwork coat and it's the the actually I'm wearing it in the idiot savant CD and that is my composer outfit and it's kind of a lot like Albert so that's Albert He's just, he's fantastic. He's gonna play a really big role, not in just this book, but in future books as well. So there it is. Today's uh, puzzle piece is the feather, and that's Albert as the composer. I hope that you get a chance to purchase this book. It is for sale right now. You can pre-order it from the store right now, and I will sign it to you, and I will ship it to you. I hope that you have a fantastic day, and as always, rock on.